So I received an interesting email from Craig Bowman and he wrote something interesting. What about using generative fill to fix selections with rough edges and haloing? That got me thinking. On top of that, he also wrote an article. I'll link it up in the description. But the biggest problems we have is selecting hair with busy backgrounds. Can it fix that? Let's check it out. So here we are in Photoshop beta. Do keep in mind, it's a completely different app from the regular version of Photoshop. If you don't have it, you can get it from your Creative Cloud desktop app. Click on beta apps and install Photoshop beta from right there. However, if you're using a Captain Jack Sparrow version of Photoshop, you might have to get it from Adobe. You can check out the link in the description to get a seven day free trial of Photoshop. First things first, with the contextual taskbar, you can directly remove the background if you don't see it. Go to window and make sure at the bottom, contextual taskbar is checked. Now, let's click on remove background, as simple as that. Now I have to give a huge thumbs up to Photoshop team. The select subject has gotten so much better recently and mostly it's just amazing. Now there's this part that it didn't get it right. As we can see, the background was quite busy right there. So how do we get that area back? What about generative fill? Before that, let's create a white background. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. And let's choose white, hit OK, and place it under the subject. Now, select the subject layer. Now what we are trying to do is generate this area again. But if we directly do that, there's gonna be an issue. So let's select this area very roughly. And if we click on generative fill, Click on generate again. You can type whatever you want, but this is the result you get. And I have to say, it's pretty darn good. So here's the first one, the second one, and the third one. The only thing is that this style is not based on the original style. It completely changes the hair. And even if it changes the hair, that's fine. But at least if it could maintain the same shape, that would be fantastic. So how do we give generative fill a reference image, something to refer from. Here's how to do it. First of all, let's delete this generation layer. And this time, we will press Q for the quick mask mode. Now, the way quick mask works is that wherever you paint, using the brush or the selection tools, that area will turn into a selection. Making sense? No? First of all, how do you know you're in quick mask mode? Have a look. This layer is turned red, which means you are in quick mask mode. If you press Q again, you're outside of the quick mask mode. Let's press Q again. Once we are in the quick mask mode, if we take a brush and we start painting anything, maybe something like this, if we press Q again, that turns into a selection. But keep in mind, it is an opposite selection. Everything but this area is selected. Have a look at the marching ants towards the edge of the canvas, right? You can always tweak as to what the painted areas signify. Let's press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. And this is the quick mask mode button if you don't want to press Q. So, Clicking on it enables the quick mask mode, as you can see. Clicking on it again disables the quick mask mode. Now let's double click on it and you can change that the color indicates selected areas. You can choose whatever color you want. Right now it's red, opacity 50, hit OK. So right now if we paint with black right here and we press Q, that area is absolutely selected and only and only that area. On the other hand, what happens if we paint with white? So right now white is selected, we are in the quick mask mode and we changed the setting inside of that. Now, if we choose a brighter color like this, absolutely white, and we paint, nothing happens. It doesn't turn into selection. What if we paint with darker gray? And now we paint, it's a transparent selection. So we need to make a transparent selection to give generative fill a reference image. So let's do that. Let's press Q. And this time we wanna paint with, let's say 50% gray. Let's set the brightness to 50 and hue and saturation at zero. That's fine. And let's paint on this area, all right? The area which you wanna generate, press Q again. Now it doesn't show up because marching ants only show up when you have a selection with opacity more than 50%. And this is 50%. Anyway, since the selection is active, you will see the generative fill button. Let's click on it and let's type in maybe curly hair. Click on generate and this time have a look at it. It will be based on the shape that is already there. There you go, you have the same shape maintained. Also, you have options to go through. Actually, I like this one and this one. You can generate a few times and choose what you like. For now, I'm gonna go with this one. Let's say this area you didn't like or at the top, this area is a bit smudged. So. How do we make a selection? We need to make a transparent selection. And how do we do that? We press Q, we paint with gray. Now you can take a darker gray if you want less of the reference image with the settings that we have made to the quick mask mode. Now let's paint right about here. That's fine. 
press Q again. Sorry about the construction in the background, it is just too much. Click on generate a fill and let's type in curly hair again. Click on generate. Now it is doing a pretty darn good job. There you go, that's nice. Now there's only one major drawback to this, actually two. The first one is a bit small and that is the resolution cap. So as you know, Generative Fill has a resolution cap of 1024 by 1024 pixels and you can combat that by generating little by little. Little area again, little area right here, that's fine. It will be taken care of. But the bigger drawback here is that Generative Fill at the moment doesn't support transparency, which means that it comes with the white background. What do I mean by that? So if I change the white background at the back to something else, have a look at it. These generations come with the white background. So you have to be watchful of that and you have to change the background beforehand and then generate the edges. So that was a fun thing to experiment and I used the same technique to mask hair. In this case, as you can clearly see, the background was green, it was bright and to get it in a black background was challenging. But this generation worked perfectly. So here's the before, as you can see, this is with select subject. There's a lot of green in there, but it's not bad. And here's generator fill. There you go, you get more details, but as you can see, the resolution is a bit lower because I generated all at once. Have a look. All of this was generated at once and generated fill is limited with resolution. But still, it's developing. It's not perfect, it's developing. This is also an example where I generated all of this at once. So here's the before. This is with select subject and here's the after. This is generative fill. So that is generative fill's take for selecting hair in a busy background. Do keep in mind it brings the background with it. So it's not basically a selection. So you have to have the background changed before fixing the edges. I hope this video encourages you to experiment and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Pixel perfect on patreon and helping keep pics and perfect free for everybody forever thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating we're up here on cloud nine and somehow we get it right every time because these days we're partners in crime